everybody and welcome to another episode from WholesingersFlyShop.com. Today we're bringing you another video and uh, by request you guys have been asking me to do some dry flies because I hardly do any dry flies because I don't fish them a lot, I fish a lot of nymphs. But um, I'm going to do a dry fly. A lot of the ones that I do fish, I fish a lot of parachutes. So I'm going to show you how I tie my parachute. Um, I got into tying the parachute... Mm, well, 20 years ago probably, and uh, when Eric Straup had his shop on Spruce Creek, Spruce Creek Fly Company, and uh, I stopped in there and asked him how to tie one, because I used to tie with calf tail, and I had such a hard time getting the right amount, I would end up making a body that was too big, and like most beginning tires, you know, you tie too big, and uh, when I used calf tail, that's what I did, I ended up making the body on my fly way, way too big. And Eric showed me the technique that he used at the time. I'm sure he probably still uses it or some variation of it. Um, he uses Antron yarn. And so that's what I'm going to do. Is a lot of guys, my dad in particular, he likes to use poly post. I don't like that as much. I like um, Antron yarn and I get to see it. I, that's one of the big reasons why you have a lot of Keller. A lot of Keller options with the Antron yarn and it's just the same as the poly yarn. So let's get into tying it. Today I'm going to tie a blue winged olive. And I'm going to use some electric wool. You guys have seen this on other videos that I've shot. It's actually really great for dry flies because it is a, when you pull it out, it's wool and it comes out super, super thin. And you get a, a really nice, like, super fine dub. So it's an overlooked because, you know, Jack ties a lot of it. The guy that come up with electric wool, Jack, um... Jack Fields, he uses it a lot for streamer patterns and stuff like that, and that's all really what it's known for. But it makes a great, super fine dub for a really thin nymph or particularly a dry fly. So, let's get into tying it here. The one I'm going to tie it on, I'm using Forestrial Abyss and Old Moss with a 50-50 mix, blending it together. I'm just taking two of the, you know, the two different colors, equal amounts, and just pulling it together to make it to get it blended half and half, okay? So it's real easy to do the blending if you want to switch the colors, but he's got great colors like Wombat, which makes a really nice Adams color. You can see it's a nice gray. Um, Dirty Otter is another one, which is just a good natural color. So play around with some of the different colors you're gonna find that it works really good for dry fly bodies. So let's get into tying it. Here you're gonna see the picture of the olive one that I'm tying and the material list, so enjoy. Okay, here you see the hook in the vise, the fly in the vise I should say, and uh, it's a fish catching fly for me. So let's get into the details of it. And uh, you'll see here it's tied nice and thin, just like we want. And this is bi-visible, I call it the bi-visible olive or whatever you're tying it in, but a bi-visible parachute. Obviously because I use two colors for the post. For the hook, we're going to get started on. The hook I'm tying is a fire hole 419 in a size 14, which is big for an olive, but I'm using it for video quality. And, you know, go small on your olives. Go 16s and 18s on your olives. Even 20s if you can tie a parachute that small. More power to you. Um, go small on it and because that's going to match your olives. But 14s is going to be a great size for all your other flies. You know, if you're using, like I said earlier, the Dirty, yeah, sorry, Dirty Otter. He has great names for these. Or Wombat for like an Adams pattern, you know. Wombat would make a great Adams and a 14 Adams. It's a searching pattern. It's a generic pattern. So use 14 if you like to tie bigger dry flies. So let's get into this pattern and we're going to use some 70 denier olive thread, light olive thread. And we're just going to start it on here a little bit behind the eye. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this back to the bend. And when I get back to the bend, I'm going to make a little ball, actually. Just a small one, not very big. And the reason for that ball is just to splay my tail feathers out just a little bit. Not drastically, but just a little bit to give it a little extra float. You know, a little extra tension on top of the water. 
for our tail material, we're going to use some Cocktail Leon. This is medium part dough. You know, don't be picky on your color of medium part, or sorry, of Cocktail Leon, because there, sometimes there's not a lot of variance in it. But I just have a really big saddle of medium part dough, so that's why you always see me using medium part dough in the videos. It's not that it's the best, it's not that it matches the most colors, it's, that's what I have handy to me, so, and it's not a big deal, you know, the fish isn't going to say, oh, that tail's too dark, that's wrong. Okay, so what I did there, as you saw, I started it on the side, and I wrapped back towards that ball, and when I get back to the ball, I'm just going to pull it tighter. And when you pull it tighter there, you see how it splays them tails out. So when that lays on the water, you're going to get more surface area on the water to hold it up and to keep it steady like a keel on the water. So once we get that on there, we're going to bring our thread up to about an eye length behind the eye. Next thing I'm going to use is some Antron. And I'm going to use two colors, fluorescent fire orange and fluorescent chartreuse. And I'm just going to cut two pieces of this off. And I'm going to put them side by side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them on top. I'm going to go a little bit long on it. And cut it down here in a second. But I want these to be right on the top here. So let's get them nice and tight there. And then I'm going to lift the two of them up together. And I'm going to make a couple wraps behind. A couple in front to hold them in place so they don't move up and down on the hook. And then I'm just going to make a couple wraps around it while I'm holding this up. Now, I don't have a parachute tool to hold it up. I just do it with my fingers. And once you get this started on there, and, and with a little practice, you'll learn how to, to get it to stay up there. And then you can make a couple loops and tighten up that post and make a nice post here to hold your hackle onto. Then I'm going to cut this off about a half an inch long or so for right now. Just for right now. Okay, now I'm going to try to tighten up that post and clean it up a little bit. There we go. And then, you see how I have now my two colors sticking out and they're going straight up and down on the hook. Okay, you can see the eye here. It's open eye, so that post is straight up and down on it. And the next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to put my dubbing on it. Oops, sorry. I'm going to put my hackle on. For my hackle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here towards the eye. And the hackle I'm going to use, because it's a blue-winged olive, I'm going to use a dun-colored saddle hackle. This is a big, long saddle hackle. And I'm just going to tie that in. You see how I cut the point here on it? I'm going to tie it in towards the eye with the point facing towards the eye angled up just a hair towards this post and once I get it tight then I'm going to hold that up on the post then we're going to come around here and we're going to wrap this down to the post and what I want to do is keep this wrapped even against the post there and create a nice post keep the post nice there we go for when I wrap my wrap that around the post to make the legs on this fly or the wings so now I got that on now I'm gonna talk now I'm gonna use the dubbing you remember me saying here in the intro that for this fly I used a 50-50 mix of forestrial bis and old moss use whatever color you like whatever you want to match if you have a sulfur color you know this is just the wool I'm using use a super fine dub if you have a super fine dub handy but I like this mix here and you can see it there it's a really nice olive and uh, I just take and knead it together there just keep I got it mixed nice and well here so now I'm gonna put this I'm just gonna take a small piece of this because it doesn't take much because we're going really thin we're gonna keep our body thin like always, just like a nymph, you know, the bodies of these flies are really small. So, I'm going to lay my dubbing on here, wet my fingers a little bit, or put dubbing wax on, whatever you like to do. And I'm going to dub that on there, and I'm going to try to keep it as thin as I can. Now, disclaimer here, I always put too much on, but because this is so fine, 
it's okay whenever you come to the end it's easy to pull off and wrap it back tight again so I'm gonna get that wrapped back to the back and I don't want to go too far because I went a little bit too far and it started to squish those tail feathers down so I backed it out just a hair so I didn't you know damage those tail feathers I want them to stay out and then we're just going to continue this right up to that post and then we're going to go around the post and I'm going to make a couple wraps and you see remember I said I always put too much on here so I'm just going to pull a little too much off there actually I'm going to leave a little bit on here to finish this up but I don't want too much so it's it's a tough little game to play but you don't want to go too much because you don't want to overdo the head here that's the biggest thing you want to have room to tie off your head when you're done and you I'm sometimes if I got a thin post I will put one wrap around the post but that looks pretty good right there and we're gonna pull that off get all those fibers off of there we go okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this up here right around the post where it's ready to tie the tie my hackle off then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hackle on and what I want it to do is I want it to lay with I want to wrap it and I want the bottom side of the feather facing down so I'm just gonna keep passing this around the post and I'm gonna start up high and wrap my way down and I usually get about four or five wraps and once I get that I come in and I just wrap what I do is I wiggle my thread over the hackle and over the eye of the hook so I get it around the bottom of that post and I get it nice and tight there on that post once I get that then I'm gonna get up here on the eye and you can cut this off now and then there's two ways to do this you can wet finish if you don't have too many fibers there like this this is further away that I'm not gonna trap any fibers by wrapping a wet finish or you can take and I don't have it handy you can take and do a half inch here yeah half hitch here like use your bodkin or something and do a half hitch right around the eye okay and if I'm gonna do it half hitch style I'm gonna do about four or five of them so now I got that good and on there the next thing I want to do is I want to take and flip this upside down and I want to look and I don't want to have any fibers going below my fly if they go below the fly that can throw the the kilter or whatever you want to call it of the fly off and then lastly I want to shorten this post up this post is way too long I don't want it so the fish can see it so I want it so I can see it so I'm just gonna cut it short you see how I got it nice and short there close to it and then I'll just take and push down on it a little bit by doing that it spreads it out you can see there it's not bigger than the, than the hackle and you got yourself a nice little parachute there okay I hope you enjoyed this video um, you know no, I don't tie them that often so it was a special one here for you get to see me tie a dry fly and I'll bring some more um, but this is the main one that I like to fish I like to fish a parachute because I have a lot more success with getting it to land the right way with the post sticking up and not hook sideways or when you've cast this the hook's going to lay down for you you know it's going to curve down into the water the way you want it to do so that's why I fish them more often than anything unless I get really small if I get really small I'll tie them cat skill style but for the most part I like to fish parachutes so give this a try and all the materials as always you can find at our shop at wholesingersflyshop.com and if you have any other requests for me like this you know, email them to me, wholesalersflyshop at gmail.com, you see down here at the bottom. That goes directly to me. If you have any questions for me about my videos, how I do something, if you want to know about a guiding trip in my area, whatever, you can reach out to me there. And uh, like always, go to our shop, Wholesingers Fly Shop, hit up our YouTube channel. Well, you're already there, so, you know, check out the other flies that you want to see. And don't forget about our other social media, like, um, 
Facebook and Instagram. So get out and like us on those two. Thanks a lot, guys. Give us the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And until next week, when I bring you another video, keep tying and, you know, tight lines get out there on the water, guys. I'm Sean Holsinger.